In the last video, we discussed how we could use for each, on complete, map, filter, number of these methods in order to schedule things to happen when a future had completed. In the case of things like map and filter, you were also, you were not only scheduling something to happen when the future had completed, you were going to get back another future that represented this continuing calculation. Okay. But what if you actually want to wait until the result is ready and then do something with it? And so this is what we refer to as blocking on the thread because we're going to make it so that the current thread stops until the other thread that is processing the future has completed. And it's something that we really don't like to do because and part of the goal of parallelism is to keep many things happening at once. If you start blocking on a lot of your threads, you're not going to get as much throughput. You're not going to get as much work done because you're sitting there blocking on stuff. So how can we do this? Well, I'm going to comment out these lines here. We'll see later on that, for example, in Java, there would have been a method called get. And get would block and give you back the value. We saw in the previous video there is a method called result here. We're just not supposed to call it. And this would give you back value. Instead, we're supposed to call await.result. So if we go look at await, there is a result. There's also a ready, uh, which will basically block until the uh, until you get back until well until the future has completed but we want to focus on result so I actually want to sit there and wait until the result is finished now one thing about this await we pass in the thing that we're waiting on which will be our future and then we also pass in a duration and this is rather important because if you don't pass in a duration then this could potentially block the thread forever okay the future might have had an infinite loop inside of it. Okay, so what's going to happen uh, in that situation? Well, if you don't have a duration to stop at, then you've now blocked, you have one thread that's churning away forever, and you have another thread that's waiting for it to happen. And this leads to a problem that we refer to as deadlock, where multiple threads are potentially waiting on each other. Um, in this case, if, it, if the calculation doesn't happen in that duration, we wind up getting a timeout exception. Okay, so let's look at the code. How do we actually put this in the code? So I want to print the result, but I want to print it here in the main thread, and I want the main thread to pause for it, which means that when I do it this way, I don't need to sleep at the end because it's not going to advance. It's going to block until F2 has finished. So we call await.result. And I'll go ahead and do the import for await. And the await method takes our future, F2, and something called a duration. Okay, well, let's go back to the API here. We've been looking in Scala.concurrent. There is also a Scala concurrent duration. And so if we import everything from Scala concurrent duration, I'm missing a dot, Oop. not there, there. Okay, if we import everything from that, that actually allows us to say five seconds here. And you can use a dot notation if you wish. Uh, winds up there's a, an implicit conversion. And I have to admit, I do not know why Eclipse is telling me that there's an error here, but you'll see over here, there is no error. This is compiling just fine, and I can run it. Oop, runtime exception. Oh, oops, I'm still throwing that. Okay, and so now the await um, blocks for however long it takes to do this calculation, which isn't anywhere close to five seconds. It's a much shorter time duration. Uh, instead of seconds, I could have used things like milliseconds and whatnot. We can go and we can look inside of duration uh, 
and there is actually a conversion to let's see a duration int which has methods for days hours microseconds milliseconds minutes nanoseconds and seconds uh, so we could have used any of these different units because of that import statement which is basically giving a conversion from int to duration int and allows you to build durations off of integer values but once again this blocks the main thread okay this will wait for up to five seconds and that means five seconds that we have a thread that's just sitting there doing nothing for us so this is kind of a last resort we only want to do it and possibly at the very end of a calculation when we're when we really have to get the result from it though a lot of times you can do just the same thing you can get the same result that you want by scheduling using a for each or an on complete to schedule something that will handle the result once you get it as opposed to blocking a thread and waiting for it to come back to you so this gives you a brief introduction to futures and how we can get the results uh, from futures we'll come back and we'll look at some of the things that we can do using the future object which gives us the ability to kind of uh, bring together uh, various values from from if we have multiple futures that are involved in a calculation